Okay, starting off again today with the infinite desktop. Um, you can use that to tell if I'm recording at home or at school. If it starts with the infinite desktop, I record it at school. If it starts with not the infinite desktop and you can see a picture of me, I'm recording at home. Just spoiler warning there. So, today we're going to be... Oops. There we go. Today we're going to be doing lesson six, which is translation notation. So translation notation is a way to write a shift or a change to a coordinate. And translation notation looks like this. Oops, I don't want to be green. I want to be black. So translation notation looks like this. Um, X comma Y, and then there's an arrow pointing to the right, and then some change to those X and Y values. Now that change to the X and Y values could be pretty simple, like say X plus 3, Y minus 2, or you could have something where it's X comma Y, and it changes to... 2x squared, and then, I don't know, 3y minus 8, something like that. It is just a way to show a change in an x and a y value. So this is called a translation rule, and you want to treat it like it's a formula. So translation rule, and you want to treat it like a formula. So let's look at an example. Let's say that we have... Um, a shape that's made up out of four coordinates. Let's say we've got one coordinate A at negative 2, 4. We've got B at negative 1, negative 2. Let's say we've got C at 2, 2. And we've got D at 3, negative 3. So I'm going to put these dots on my page here. You can connect them or you don't necessarily need to. So my first one is at negative 2, 4, which is right here. My next one is at negative 1, negative 2, and then 2, 2, and then 3, negative 3. I'm going to make sure to label these. So here's A, B, C, and D. And now I'm going to use a translation rule to change these points. So the translation rule I'm going to use here is going to be relatively simple. So let's go X comma Y is going to change to uh, 2x comma y plus 1. I think that should work out okay. Now what that means is when I'm finding where each coordinate goes, I'm going to use their x and y values in this rule as if it's a formula. Now the new point, so these are what are called the pre-image. The new point is called the image. So when I'm doing what A is going to change to, I'm going to mark it with a little apostrophe next to it, and that is called prime notation. So A is the pre-image. A prime is the image. B prime is going to be the image of B, meaning what happens after this translation. C prime is the image of C, and D prime is the image of D. And so these are the image points. Now, starting with a, so I'm going to take my x value, negative 2, and plug it into this formula. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and y plus 1 would be 5. So that's where a prime is. And I'm going to use um, green to mark the prime points. So I've got negative 4, positive 5, which is right here, a prime. Uh, b prime is going to go to... Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And then negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. C prime is going to go to 4, 3. And D prime is going to go to 6, negative 2. So let me mark all these points here. So I've got A prime. B prime is at negative 2, negative 1. C prime is at 4. 4, 3, and d prime is at 6, negative 2. So again, this is called a translation rule. Treat it like it's a formula. The original points are called the pre-image, and they don't have an apostrophe. The points after the translation rule get this little apostrophe, and that apostrophe in math is read as prime. So let me actually write that down. So this is a prime. 
like Optimus Prime. And uh, the original points are the image, or sorry, the pre-image, and then the new points are the image. And that's all there is to it. You're just moving points around. All right. Um, everybody have a good day. And back to the infinite desktop.